And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we're going to be mixing some concoctions of different fragrances to try to create some notes in order to turn those notes and turn them into perfume and sell them to customers. Today we're looking at Perfume, or Parfum, from Queen Games. It's designed by the same duo that did the game Fresco, a popular game in the Queen game lineup. And it's for two to four players. It plays in about 45 minutes. Let's take a look. I'll see you on the other side. Here's the board set up for either two or four players. You play on this side of the board for perfume. The other side of the board looks the same, but it scales quite down for three players only, so it's a double-sided, double-function board. Everyone gets to pick their color. I pick green, I get a nice little perfume green bottle, and a green awninged player board, and a couple of water droplets. In general, over the course of the game, you're gonna be trying to use these dice to create fragrances that get you money because you can turn them in to essentially get these fragrance notes and eventually sell those perfume bottle to customers that want certain fragrances. Let's talk about how a turn works. Now the first phase is the wake up phase and you get to, in player order from last place to first place, gets to pick one, two, three, or four. That is turn order. The earlier you wake up, you get to go first, but you'll have less actions. This is three actions where if you wake up last, you'll go last because you woke up later in the day, but you'll get more actions because you're in a better mood. Very similar to Fresco. Uh, now, in the first round, these are all randomly just distributed, but after that, whoever's last, if someone's tied for last, whoever's on top would get to choose first. So green would get to choose first. Maybe he wants a lot of actions this round, he takes this. And then red would take one, then yellow, and whoever's in first place gets whatever's left. That's the time phase. Then we go on to the actions phase. Now remember, I took them in last place, so let's just assume that the people in front of me had already taken their turn. I'm the fourth player to go this round. I get six actions. Now, one of the things you could do for an action is you could take one of these fragrance dice. And this is, you know, the vanilla and lavender and violet and roses and citrus. And so let's say I'm going to take some dice. I have six total actions. So let's say I take three of these dice. That's one, two, three actions. Uh, a second thing you can do for an action is you can take one of these water droplets. Let me take two more. So that's one, two, three, four, five. I've taken five actions. Now, what do these water droplets do? Some of them are worth points at the end of the game. Some of them are blank, and they'll allow you to mitigate the dice. I'll show you how that works in just a moment. And one of the third options, I have one action left, is I can take a tile from this bag and replace any empty spots because the people in front of me this turn uh, turned in some dice and they were able to create some notes. So for my last action, I took another one off here and I did that. So uh, at that point, I'm done with all my actions. Now it's time to distill. Now I'm gonna roll these three dice because those are the three I took for my actions. Now, half the time we need to get, uh, for, every, for every flask, we're able to successfully uh, create a note. For any fly, we do not. Now these three fragrances here are 50-50 between flasks and um, uh, flies. And the two better fragrances up there, uh, four out of six are flies and only two out of six are flasks. So I would take these and I would roll them and I've got two flasks and a fly which is pretty good because I needed two flasks of, of the citrus to get this note. And as you can see, this one, I would have needed three flasks of blue. This one, I only need one flask of vanilla. So because I had two flasks, I could just turn in those two dice and get this for two bucks. I would go up two on the score pad. And then this, I would get to put on my player board. Now notice the one I got is the middle. Some of these have bottoms and some of these are tops. So this is a middle one. So when I flip this over to become a perfume bottle, you have two choices normally, is you can add to a bottle, a brand new bottle, or you can add to one that's already there. This side is a major perfume because it has a bottom, a middle, middle, and a top. This side is just a top and a bottom. So if I had gotten a bottom, I could have chosen to put it here or here, or if I was even, uh, uh, if there was already a bottom here, I could have actually and let's say I had gotten a top, I could actually even start a new one. So it's, it's however you want to do it. But once they're, once they're set, you cannot create, uh, you cannot move them around. So let's say I got this one right here and now I've started to make this perfume. Now I told you about these water droplets. 
Now, after you're done rolling, you can, if you want, you can turn in one of these and discard them face up out of the game. And that allows you to re-roll all the flies of one color. So let's say I had rolled like that, I needed to get two flasks. I could turn in one of these and re-roll all the flies of one color. And then boom, I still would have been able to get it. Now let's say I actually needed three green flasks for a, for a fragrance, and I really needed this. You can turn in two of these to flip over any, um, any one die to a flask. So you can, yeah, that, you can do that with two. Also, if you give just one, you can re-roll all the dice, but you have to even re-roll the flask. So there's, there's basically ways to use these to mitigate your dice rolls there. And there's no saying how many of these you could get. If I had grabbed a blue and two uh, vanilla die and I was able to roll all flasks, you can actually take more than one on your turn when you're distilling. So you, you, you're, not, uh, you're not stopped by just buying one. Next, we'd go to the sell phase and going in turn order, everybody would get a chance to try to sell these people. Let me show you how selling works. But before I do that, let me, uh, let me get some perfume bottles completed that we can actually sell. So let's say I'm a couple more turns in and I get this last one and finish this bottle. When I finish this bottle of perfume, uh, if it's a major perfume, meaning it has, uh, it's on the right side where you have three of these, you get three of these flasks. If it's on the left side and it's just the top and bottom, you would get two flasks and you'd put it on the perfume bottle. This allows me to sell three of these perfume bottles and I have one vanilla, two citrus, actually I have two vanilla, two citrus, uh, and a violet there. So let's just pretend that I just I just uh, made this and it was time in the selling phase. So assuming we're playing with four players here, um, and let's say I had the number one uh, token round, I would get the first chance to sell. And one of my perfumes, if you remember, had two citrus. So I could sell it to this customer. Because I have two citrus, I have this guy, I would get six points or six money on the board. And one of these would get sold and they would go back to the pot. And everybody else in turn order would get a chance to sell one. And let's say someone bought this and someone bought this. It's my turn again because you get two rounds of, of to sell uh, each selling phase. So I'm going to sell to this guy for eight bucks because I have two vanillas and this guy needs two vanillas. So I go there and I would take this and sell it back. And I would go up eight points. Now let's just assume this was my last bottle. Anytime you sell out of a perfume, you automatically get two water droplets because you've sold out for later and then this perfume's just done. It can just sit there for the rest of the game. It's not gonna do anything, but I got two more for that. Now at any time on your turn during the sell phase, if instead of selling to a customer, you can sell a minor perfume for two bucks or a major perfume for three bucks. This typically happens towards the end of the game when you have too many perfumes and you know you're not gonna have time to sell them all. At least you can get some money for them. That would be the end of the round. You have to discard down to four water droplets. I'd get rid of one of my blank ones, and that would be the end of the round. At this point, all the fragrance notes would get replaced, all the customers would get replaced, and we would look at the, the board and we would reset who gets first, red would get to choose clock first, and so on as I told you before. This would continue until one of two things happened. As you notice, most of the customers at the beginning are A customers and they're smaller and they have less things. And then you get to the B customers, which are can sometimes make a lot more money, but sometimes you need bigger things. So you'll continue going through these rounds until one of two things happen. When refilling the customers in between a round, five, when there's five customers left, just upon there's a, a round end marker, you would throw that to the side and this next round would be the last round and you continue to fill the customers. Or if when you get ready to fill the, 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 the perfume notes here, if there's none left in the bag, the game ends immediately and whoever has the most points is the winner. At the end, you also get to turn over all your water droplets because some of those might be points. You'll move up those amounts and then whoever has the most points is the winner. Now in a two player game, you still use the four player board, but let's say these are the two players. It's the beginning of the next round. Red's in last place. They get to pick first. Let's say red picks this. And then you alternate. Yellow picks this, red picks this, yellow picks this. So I have these two clocks. I'm gonna go second and fourth, essentially gonna be able to take two turns per round. I'm gonna go second, I'm gonna go fourth, I'm gonna get four actions, and then I'm gonna get six actions. And that's how pretty much the two player game works. And when you're selling perfumes that are in the sales phase with two players, you actually get to sell two of them before the next player gets to sell. So you'll sell two, they'll sell two, you can sell two more, they can sell two more. So you can sell a total of four uh, perfumes per round with a two-player game. That's perfume. And in usual Queen Games fashion, the components in the production are excellent. The board looks great. The artwork's awesome. The components are great. Even the insert looks awesome. 
It's typical queen games, you expect the best from them, and this is no less than that. The game itself, I was sort of lukewarm on. Um, I like chucking dice, so that's the part I like the best. Like, you know, at the end of the games that we've played, I enjoyed it, and I said, oh, that was, that was kind of fun. Um, if you asked me to play this and, hey, you want to play Perfume? Sure, I'd play it. I like it. I enjoyed it. It's not going to be one that I'm going to bring out to the table all the time. It's not even probably going to be one that I'll end up keeping just because I think the game had, I mean, it was fun and, I, and the chucking the dice part was fun. The problem that I think some people are going to have with this is that there's a lot of luck involved. Uh, you know, you're rolling the dice, and depending on which dice you roll, are going to be better or worse chances. Of course, you can kind of mitigate some of those, some of the times with those water droplets. And I'm not sure if I showed in the overview, but you can turn in some droplets and roll some dice, and then turn in some more droplets and roll some more dice and roll those again. So you can try to mitigate that, but of course, it takes actions to get those droplets. Or if you sell out of a perfume, you'll get some too. But again, you got to usually you got to do something to be able to mitigate those. So there's a lot of luck in the dice rolling. There's a lot of luck in the tiles as they come out. You could be sitting there waiting for a top, waiting for a top, and it doesn't come out. You take a couple actions to refill those notes, no top, and then sometimes you just can't do anything that turn. Um, if you're in first place and everybody is trying to take a lot of actions in the sort of the, the medium part of the game, and they, they leave you with first place, you're only getting three actions, and maybe you're out of water droplets, you might go a few turns with getting nothing because of the bad luck. And that sometimes can be very frustrating. Um, so there's, a, there's too much luck for me to really love this game. Uh, and I don't mind luck in my game. It, I think who this is good for, I don't think this was really designed, obviously, to be played with a bunch of gamers that want deep strategy and no luck. Queen games, family level, we know what they're going for. And this could be good for families with kids where the kids might not be as uh, uh, be able to think through the turns and think through the strategies and stuff like that as the adults, and that luck might even that game out. So it might be actually a perfect blend for a family like that. Now, keep in mind also, though, if you're going to play with young kids, this game can be pretty nasty and mean because you go and you take the first the first action, the first clock, and it comes around and, and it comes time to sell, and someone worked their whole last two turns to get three roses to sell, but you've got three roses, and boom, I'm going to sell it to that one customer, and they did all that work, not for nothing, but it really is like, oh. So the game is actually a little bit meaner, meaner and nasty than it first appears, but there's a lot of luck. So for me, uh, I was lukewarm. It's okay. I'll play it, but it's not my favorite. Uh, a decent game, pretty good for families, uh, but not one that I'm going to be bringing out all the time. That's Perfume. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.